welcome. This is Talk of the Nation. Now, for a week now, several boarding schools have been closing for the second term holidays. Though the certified school term is supposed to go up to August 12th, many are complaining about the cost of maintaining students in school. Now, to help us appreciate this, we do have a school owner as well as vice chancellor of Kampala International University, Professor Muhammad Mpenzam Higo. Good evening and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Good evening and good evening our viewers. Thank you for hosting me tonight. All right. So early, early this year, we did have a similar conversation, you know, about the challenges and how the first term went. And um, also uh, the, the biggest challenge that you registered in the first term was, you know, in discipline from students that had stayed home for about two years. Mm. So in the same regard, we want to know what are some of the challenges that you've registered in the just concluded or the yet to be concluded second term? Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, actually, what has happened, uh, the, the, the positive side of it is that term one was a bit more challenging in terms of uh, running the school, uh, uh, kids and students and pupils getting to know, uh, to cope and getting back to refresh to their settle pattern, in. To settle in. Um, we had challenges in term one, by the way, even uh, university system in semesters, uh, some students didn't turn up. Uh, and then when we entered in second term, uh, what happened is that there, there was a realization that, look, I think everything is getting back to normal. And so we found some uh, schools that actually were flooded with students. Uh, unfortunately, you remember the mix of uh, students who had been promoted, uh, you know, a year or two above the year they had been in, even without actually studying. And some schools did not even conduct interviews, uh, so they enrolled massively. Now, it came to the situation of the real running, you know, making sure the kids have food, uh, the schools are properly maintained, you have to uh, keep the bills, water bills and electricity, and also the wage bill. And, and we had this inflow and outflow of teachers. Some came, you know, for a month and disappeared, went back to their new businesses, you know. Some decided to go and make chapatis, you know, run border borders and so on and so forth. So, so in the beginning of term two, uh, at least what we saw, uh, many of the students and even the parents became a bit more cooperative and they were willing to support. But as we went along, the reality of the markets started getting in. Mm. Uh, the, the, you know, the fuel cr uh, crisis in the country, uh, the tough economic situation. And so what was happening, some schools actually started skipping meals. Uh, they also were breaking off earlier during the day, you know. And then they were also facing, some of them decided actually to have fewer uh, students in the boarding facility because with the boarding facility you spend more money especially on on the welfare of the kids in yeah. the schools yeah yeah that's the, the, the same situation has actually you know led or made some schools to send ch uh, students back home before the term end what is your take on this Ah uh, well there is a definitely a very big challenge uh, on the one hand there is a, rea a reality uh, the school owners, the directors, you know, the parents themselves have not been able to uh, live up to their promises, you know. Uh, schools have accepted kids and pupils and students, uh, you know, with little payments uh, in the hope that along the term, mm. uh, you know, they'll be able to make up for, for whatever is, is not paid. So what has happened, uh, once this, the, 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 the students were brought in, the kids were brought in schools, some parents have never even stepped in, in the school, not even to do a single VD, a visitation day. Times are hard. <laughs> they are hard, but you see, whose responsibility is, is it? I mean, schools have a portion of a responsibility. You as the guardians also have a responsibility. So, so, so what is happening is that uh, actually the expenses mm. exceeded the, the, the revenues for most of them. The danger, though, is that we've seen some schools that have actually closed. I was, I mean, the other day I got a call from one parent and he told me uh, his kids have been at home for the last three weeks. I mean, this is uh, before even two weeks before the closure of the term, uh, the schools have closed three weeks before. Now, the question is how much content, how much learning has actually taken place? What's the value of having this kid like uh, three quarters of the term at school one even wonders whether the teachers of such schools were actually being paid 
and what the kids were actually doing in the school. So there is a, a danger of compromising on quality, and these kids are progressing, and especially the ones that are doing a new curriculum where they're supposed to be, it's, it's, it's a student-based learning, you know, the students drive the learning process. Now, if the teachers and the school management decides to close uh, much earlier, mm. the reality is they can't keep them and they starve. I that mean, th that's the reality. On the other hand, uh, you can't again raise the fees because already the, the parents can't afford what you are charging them at the moment. So what will you have the schools do at a, a time as this? Now, I mean, we have to look at various options. Mm. Do we now go for the butter system, you know, exchange? Because do you, do the parents are hard up, the schools are hard yes. up, the students are the ones that are actually getting affected the most. Absolutely. I mean, do parents do farming? If they do, is it, I mean, I've seen in the press and social media, and the Daily Monitor actually uh, highlighted there was a future article that was talking about a possibility of uh, kids uh, and the parents actually bringing food in kind. I mean, now that is also going to create another issue because the beauty of uh, centralizing the purchase of food items in schools is that you are able to standardize the food quality. Now, if you say bring 50 kgs of, of beans and another 30 for maize, then uh, 10 kilograms of sugar, I mean, we are going to have a, a real issue in terms of the quality and the management of these food items. I need some clarity. You said uh, you're, you're asking parents mm. to bring food for their children to school? In kind. I mean, for, for, for I mean, purposes of survival. Of survival. I mean, if you can't afford the food, eh, the, I mean the cash, you can't bring the cash because even the school will not be able to do a proper purchase, then is there a possibility, and I'm actually throwing it to the parents and the school owners, is there a possibility of us introducing the butter system? If you have food in kind, mm. I think schools had better think about that rather than run a term halfway and then close. Because that means for us who are at the university level, in the long run, the people we are getting, the graduates coming from the lower level uh, education systems, structures, will definitely be half-backed. And then we will have a big issue as a country uh, when we come to, pro to graduate these students. Because definitely they are not getting what they deserve. The cash may actually not be possible because uh, some schools have registered high tuition areas mm -hmm. of up to like 45% of learners not being able to meet up the fees. How serious is this for the schools especially? I mean, it is a very big problem. As, as if you remember, if you do a recollection, We've had a discussion here before. Yes. Uh, prior to COVID-19, schools were highly indebted, you know, in, with bank loans. But then we had the hit by COVID. And then we came out of COVID. You know, in January, we opened. I mean, not, nobody did anything about the loans that uh, schools owed. They had to renegotiate. The interests are accumulating. And so if, if we now go into another sort of nightmare of, of indebtedness, then you are going to see sooner or later you will see a collapse of some especially the private schools because with public schools there's some government subvention there's support that comes in some uh, like on on salaries and a few other support that come in and even upe schools and youth schools and other support that comes from government whereas the private schools are the private schools are going it alone you know you imagine a school that runs a, a day facility with buses, you know, mm. that have to consume fuel that has gone up, and then the maintenance costs are very high. What you are paying the staff is very low. They can't meet their costs. So what happens? Even the meals. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, so there, is a, there is a need for, for the, the education sector to sit and see what do we do for, I mean, we are coming back on the 5th, uh, most of the schools officially, 5th of September. And then universities are also resuming this August, you know, like uh, in KIU, the first years are coming back around the third week of August, and other universities are also doing the same. There is even a bigger problem for us. We do not even have the students. The enrollment levels are going to be interesting because we do not have A-level leavers who are coming this year, and therefore we have to go for those who are upgrading. So the mechanisms of survival up to the end of 2022, I think, for education, we must ponder and see how best we'll have to do. Do the boarding schools decide to, to, to reduce their capacity for the, for the boarding section and only deal with day so that you now knock off one meal 
that's an option. Do we now stop transporting the students so that the parents have a cost-sharing arrangement? You drop your kid anywhere if you want to walk or you want to use a border border. Can that reduce the cost of running and also the payments you have to make to school? I mean, there are quite a number of scenarios that we have to all think about with the help of uh, the ministry to see that we do not compromise on quality because we are suffering from the hardships of the economy. If you were to advise, uh, what would you propose as a way forward, you know, for, the, for saving the private sector of the education system? I mean, there is need for real seed funding that needs to come, uh, especially on uh, uh, supporting uh, the, 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 the running of the schools. And the biggest issue uh, is basically on food cr prices. I mean, running schools would not be a big issue. I'm sure wages can be raised, but the moment it involves uh, feeding, and by the way, I don't know whether our viewers are aware, you know, uh, the feeding goes with age. You know, like <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the adolescents, <laughs> the teenagers oh, yes. consume more food. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, so, so the cost of running a secondary <laughs> school <laughs> in terms of feeding is much higher compared to, uh, I mean, primary. primary, even universities, by the way, because they, it's not that intensive. Mm. And so, and then you have to ensure that everybody lives happily. Otherwise, uh, it will be just, you know, uh, doing it for the sake of going to school and uh, you know, taking our time, we complete a year and we move on and students are being promoted, uh, that is likely to create us a very big problem. So government needs to come on board and then the private sector itself. Can we now think about big companies? For example, uh, companies that are in this country, can, can government, for example, think of introducing some kind of contribution from businesses that can build an education fund that would support you know, salvaging uh, the, the education system in this country. Thank you so much, Professor Mohamed Mpenzamhigo, Vice Chancellor at Kampala International uh, University, as well as a school owner getting to share their dilemma or the situation in schools when we talk about the rising cost of living. We take a break and return with NTV Weekend Edition.